Hello, everyone, and welcome to this. I'm uh, just doing the math it's in the my free one. The first time that's been helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, should do the, uh, the thing one. that we started doing on Kill James Bond, where I say it's the first episode of 2023 every time because I mm. lose track and think it is. <laughs> so it's the first episode yeah. of Trash Future of 2023. I assume because you get hit on the head with that big brick at the end of every Kill James Bond. Yeah, I don't episode. know why they do that. It it feels rude well, to me. The key but, is, you know, it must be for a good reason. They do remind you why they do that. Then they hit you on the head with that big brick. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, listen here, Bond, it's called a brick. <laughs> You're going to... <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's a different key, me, see? Now, listen here, Bond, it's is this ordinary brick. It looks it's perfectly normal. However, as you can see, it's made by the streetwear company Supreme. So I just wanted to actually celebrate the uh, first, question mark, quote-unquote, uh, episode of 2023, as far as I'm aware. By uh, with with the this insane Ow, my head. It's, it, no, there's been an insane development. <laughs> there is a useful. I hate when there's an insane development. There's a useful NFT company that has an actual use. No, hey, it it only took what? How many years have we been hearing about these fucking things? But they did it. At, they made it real. They finally got a real business out of it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't know because the brick. The, no. Yeah, the prophecy has come true. You know, it's like the the exception finally has come along to prove the rule. Would you like to know, Milo? Uh, Alice, I know you know what this is. Milo, would mm-hmm. you like to know what the useful NFT startup does? Yeah. So I'm currently trying to gauge how sarcastic you're being. I no, think no, this it's is... useful. It's a genuine, actual use case. Right, okay. Um, I would love to hear about it. So thank you for bringing this to my attention. You pay them $60, mm-hmm. and then okay. they buy... Any NFT for one cent, and then you can book the loss on your taxes. Oh, okay. It's a seller of last resort. All they right. will help you do a fire sale of your apes yeah. for upwards of a cent. Well, not even upwards. One cent because only. They will buy any ape. It, for a fee. We buy any ape. <laughs> we, we buy any ape.com. So it's, a, it's <laughs> essentially, because a lot of people who are, who are doing cryptocurrency were just saying... Um, which is saying, well, well, obviously this isn't real money. It's not going to get taxed. And so anytime you would trade from like, um, you know, Bonk coin to Shiba Inu to, you know, mm. Elon Musk Mars coin or whatever, mm, right? Yeah. That would be a taxable event. Or whatever. And so you would rack up mm. enormous amounts of tax obligations. And so now if all of that has culminated in you buying, you know, several pictures of apes that are now worth pennies, you can at least offset some of your insanely huge tax burden by using this platform called Unsellable. So uh, we are doing a little banner drop behind us in the studio. Calling it Unsellable, yeah, really, unsellable. like r- adding insult to injury, sort of rubbing it in. If anyone, if anyone deserves to have insult added to their injury, it is these people. Oh, yes. Um, no, we, d- we agree, of course. Yeah. But. $60? <laughs> yeah. The margin on that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. All they- Surely you could pay them like $5 to buy what something for one cent. And that's still a $4.99 profit margin they've got there. Yeah, maybe we we could cut we could undercut these people r- so yeah. easily. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe we could be the second effective like financially effective mm. NFT business. <laughs> Uh, we you will just, buy your ape. You could just like, go up to like any teenager and be like, hey, I'll give you $10 to buy this ape off me for a cent, and they'd probably do it. Shut up, old man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't like that apes anymore. That was the anymore. style at the time. <laughs> we don't like apes anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to take the big sign that says... It's this- all macaques now. <laughs> There's a big garbage can <laughs> outside the back of uh, the Trash Future studio that has big signs that say Trash Future Oil Warehouse. Trash mm. Future Derivatives Trading Shop. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to put up a new sign. This one's definitely not going to get taken down. It is Trash Future Crypto Buyer of Last Resort. Yeah, that was, all, you know, everyone was all excited about, you know, bored apes this, bored apes that, but no one ever considered that one day we too would become bored of the apes. Wow. Uh, there's one crypto short trader who I, I talk to pretty frequently. And one thing I have noticed in the crypto the winter guy. is that what they've done <laughs> is it's less and less about crypto market moving news and more and more about asking for wine advice. Oh. Oh, yeah. All of those guys are going to, like, retire to the Cote du Rhone, right? And b- because uh, we did a foolish thing, right? We also predicted that crypto was a bubble that was going to, like, pop 
and uh, all of this stuff was going to become worthless instantly. But what we didn't do, and what we mm. should have done, is bet millions of dollars that that was going to happen. Because, yeah. okay, granted, we didn't have the millions of dollars, but yeah. if we had... <laughs> there was done, one floor in this plan. <laughs> <laughs> if we had done that, we could have billions of dollars Alice's now. five point plan to getting rich one start with millions of dollars <laughs> exactly yeah mm. i find it probably would be very helpful well, yeah. you know what i would love I, if we had been able to like actually put some money where our mouth was uh in sort of talking mm. about you know these sort of phenomena of modern politics and the economy we would have been able to do the thing where you can rent Liechtenstein for a night like the whole Wait, what? You can rent the whole country, like an Airbnb. But- yeah, yeah, it's seventy thousand dollars a night. It's been available since two thousand eleven, and they'll like rename all the streets for you. Like they'll sort of have a parade in all your honor. Street- See, that's really funny because that's the kind of thing that like crypto investors would have done like a year ago. You you live in Liechtenstein. You have to like I don't know, uh, call an ambulance or something, and you're like, oh, I live on. I guess today it's crypto dot com Strasse. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm um, I'm actually it's oh my god, oh my god, I'm having a heart attack. Uh, please, I need to I ambulance to the uh, to the moon, Strasse, uh, which yeah. is only marginally yeah. better service than in the UK now. I hate to live on Elon Musk, Strasse. Yeah, I actually live on uh, AM, uh, AMC kind. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is from an article in 2011. It's something I've been obsessed with this for a long time. Just the fact that you can rent a city. <laughs> Uh, the Principality of Liechtenstein makes itself available to private clients from $70,000 a night. That makes it sound like it's hooking. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with customized street it signs. It a girlfriend experience. <laughs> well, no, it's your base no doing this thing, though. This is the prince experience, <laughs> oh. essentially. Because mm. then you can issue your own temporary they give currency. give you a purple shirt and a little, little Stratocaster. Yeah. Um, and then... Some uh, bouffant hair. <laughs> It says again. I feel like we could undercut this too. Like now, I'm just engaged business mindset. I'm like, we could undercut Liechtenstein so easily. Right, we're going to San Marino, and we're going to go to them and say, right, what you're going to do is you're going to offer the Trash Future X San Marino girlfriend experience, sell it at like sixty thousand dollars a night, uh, and the money will just come rolling in. We take half of it. The San Marinese take the other half. You know, and then we can we can retire with all of your wine crypto short guys. I live on a we uh, Swedish Italiana. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for uh, one night only. Uh, you, you, uh, it's it's fun. So, but you I get presume like, this is what they sound like in a San Marino. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably that, well, that, and whatever accent. Oh, <laughs> enough. Uh, what, whatever accent you get when you sell uh, guns to Italians through a legal loophole, that's that's the accent that you have. Oh, do yeah. they do that? Yeah, that's like that's m- one of the main ways in which guns get into Italy. Is that San Marino has just said guns are fine. You can buy guns here. Oh. Well, an Italian would never misuse a gun. Oh, of course. No, no, uh, I don't have any problems with that. Over there. Neither through incompetence nor malice would an Italian. Misuse a gun. <laughs> oh, it's never happened. They're like Robocop over there. They've got prime directives about that shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, find a point of gun and a, a plate of marinara sauce, just won't do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have another yeah. couple of bits of old friends I want to talk about as well. Remember, um, this was a while ago. Remember how Tony Blair's son started that uh, education technology I, startup? I do. It made me really mad. Yeah, well, it made me so mad. This is this is report because I, I every time I feel like we have a friend, I create a little Google alert, and I just like anytime something happens with them, I want to bring it up on the show. Uh, this um, is like Riley sat in a bunker, and there's like a klaxon going off. Alert! Alert! <laughs> you and Blair has done some shit. <laughs> I don't want to hang out in Hemel Hempstead with you and Blair and his dodgy company. Andrew Tate, and Blair. Is like, is what a crossover. Sorry, I want to buddy before, cop movie. Before we talk about what's happened with with and with you and Bla- Blair's firm Multiverse, I do want to send out a cry for help, which is that mm. isn't this whole podcast one of in those? 2018 we were introduced to Andrew Tate by a video of him he was surprisingly down to earth and <laughs> yeah. very funny by a video of him. <laughs> yeah. Try, like making a bet with one of his, you know, Cretinous fans that they couldn't show him a good night out in the UK. And yeah, got- he put out a call to all of his fans saying, "You can, if you take me on a good night out in the UK, because I don't believe there's such a thing as a good night out in the UK." He's like, "I've got ten thousand pounds in cash, and I will pay for everything. But if I think your night out is shit, I get to knock you out." <laughs> that was the that yeah. was his <laughs> challenge. And what all we have of that video is a short clip which if we can find Nate will play now 
What do you mean who cares? We have... I've told everyone in the world we're going to fight. Yeah, and we'll fight. Because I'm not scared of you, mate. You're not going to just sit here and bully me and my mate. I'm not trying to bully you. We agreed. Well, yeah, all right. It's an agreement, mate. And I will fight. I'm not scared of you. Let's have that now, right? I'm not fucking scared of you. Let's get out and just do this. Listen, thing. give me your give me your phone because I don't trust either of you fucking worms. Give me your phone. All right, get... Give you're you're going to record this. That's your phone, yeah? So you can't run off. Give me your phone. Yeah, listen, okay. all right, all right. Rav. All right, all right, all right, all right. Listen. Nah, mate. Nah, mate. Listen. I ain't scared of you, mate. Listen. Right? Nah, listen. We promise you a good night. You tried. You didn't try. I tried. Right. Listen. Listen. Right. Listen. Let me tell the camera. So listen. Listen. Stay there. No kicks. No knees. No. Boxing only. Punches only. Yeah. Punches right. only. Fair enough, First mate. one to quit. I ain't scared. Loses. I ain't scared, mate. All right. Let's go. All right. All right. So let me take my jacket off. Wait, wait, wait. First one. To, first one to quit loses. Yeah. I ain't stay scared. there. Stay there. Stay there. First one to quit loses. All right. My watch. Hold my watch. Hold my watch. So, if you please, anyone, if you have this video or a link to this video. They or took you, him on a night out in Hemel Hempstead. Or you, this is archive work. We need this for posterity. Oh yeah. <laughs> or you know someone I who knows someone. the story culminated with him like falling asleep in a bathtub. No, it didn't culminate like, with him falling asleep in a bathtub. That was three quarters of the way through. It culminated. Oh, wow, it was a four act play. It culminated okay. in him uh, in front of his Mercedes uh, with the guy who has now shown him a bad night about to get punched. The guy's like, wait, can you just take your watch off for a sec? And then he's like, okay, yeah, sure. And when he turns to take his watch off, the guy just runs away. <laughs> now that is Sigma grind set. You can't say yeah. fairer than that. Yeah, I mean, you know what? He got one over on Top G. Andrew Tate should have thought of asking the, the Romanian SWAT team if they could take their watch off for a sec. I don't like to get arrested by guys wearing watches. I find it kind of soy. So, like, yeah, sorry. okay, man. Sure. <laughs> well, <Victor Patrick laughs> Allow me to just turn away for a second. While I do this, and I presume you're gonna stay there eating your pizza. <laughs> yeah, man. So they're anyway. all victims. So, <laughs> that's the one team made up entirely. It's like the clone army in Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> the base okay. person was okay. a stand-up comedian. All right, all right, all right, right. <laughs> so uh, before we get into everything else, I want to say, fucking yeah. SWAT team now. You and Blair, uh, <laughs> his edtech for Multiverse has report a, reported a sixth straight year of losses. Uh, the uh, well, uh -oh. I mean, listen. Any any business, it takes some time to get off the ground, right? You gotta like be in it for the long haul. Just uh, give him the rest of the decade, you know. And maybe he'll come good on this. Maybe he'll make you know a VR headset that makes you good at apprenticeships or whatever. You know what they say: you gotta spend money to lose money. And boy, is he spending <laughs> yeah, yeah. money! Boy, is he good at at spending and losing money. Uh, so just to remind you, in case you've forgotten what multiverse is. It's attempting to create an alternative to university in general by offering what appear to be a series of Zoom calls getting you ready for apprenticeships. Um, and a lot of it's... So, a lot of it's re and here's the thing. I'm surprised that it's losing revenue because it's supposed to be funded by one of these like um, attempts by the Tories in the mid-2000s to fix British capitalism by like making everyone pay into an apprenticeship levy and then trying to like create opportunities to apprentice. Obviously, none of that works, but it's it's got hmm. its mouth on the state, on like the sort of legally mandated spending faucet. So it's astonishing to me that it hasn't actually made money. It's you have to be on. really fucking stupid to not make money in that situation. In that it's situation, on the government my, my lips, like a neck yeah. bone, like a goddamn pig's foot. <laughs> it wants that. Except it needs that. Like lips wrapped around the tap, around the faucet, except somehow missing every single drop of water coming out of it. Like they're <laughs> all going in like fifty different directions, like a dog with a hose. It just like it's all coming out of the sides. Fantastic, and for years, yeah, yeah for six straight years, it just can't fucking do it. Um, so I mean, I mean, he's fine, obviously, because all he had to do was show some investors, some you know, guileless investors, a pitch deck, you know, houses with like four swimming pools in the basement. Um, okay, so moving on, because we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. The last bit of um, uh, of bric-a-brac to discuss before we get into the startup and then the the serious shit. Um, Welcome to the until they hit me with after the end of every kill game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is, so I want us to say this is a dark day. Um, for bizarre vanity apps the world over, because not only is Jeremy Renner in the hospital, but Matt Hancock MP has announced that Matt Hancock MP will no longer be available on the App Store. I know it's oh, it's no. a bad I week. Mean, who for would have thought? Or, 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 I was going to say autonomous, as in named after oneself apps, yeah, but then I realized that sounds like autonomous, yeah, which is having one's own autonomous. mind. They were just there. 
Yeah, they sprung up mm. from nowhere. <laughs> they were actually copyright infringing <laughs> on Jeremy Renner and Matt Hancock. <laughs> so, Alice, please. I just who who would have thought that like of the social media apps that we use most frequently, it wouldn't be Twitter. It would be Matt Hancock MP. It would be the one that would die in sort of like January twenty. It's just I feel like we, I mean, the fact is we all met on Matt Hancock MP. Some of my best friends. Yeah, it was like a, it was a subculture called like weird Matt Hancock MP. It had a lot of overlap. Yeah, with something and, to be honest, I'm kind um, of annoyed when everyone's like, "Oh, Matt Hancock MP is the hell site." But it's like, look, if you didn't want to be there, you wouldn't be on Matt Hancock MP. And I've had like I've met a lot of really mm, close friends yeah. through Matt Hancock MP, so I don't understand why people kept calling it the hell site. We all remember the day on Matt Hancock MP when Trump got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> what oh, a day that was! That was. Oh, what a day that was on Matt Hancock MP. A great day of yeah. Matt posting. So what Matt? What Matt? Yeah, I, I rematted so many funny memes that day. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I matted so many people about that. Some- <laughs> Someone quote matted your mat. <laughs> oh god. Another ghost quote mat. <laughs> Nothing to see here. The conceit, Matt. The, the conceit of, of um Matt Hancock MP, the app, in this in this bit, I feel, is that you can only post using <laughs> images or video of Matt, mm. and then you have to like append whatever sort of like caption or vibe or filter you want oh, to. Of yeah, that's that great. Matt. Yeah, yeah, that Matt Hancock MP yeah. running towards Trump, uh, giving him uh, COVID, for example. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, so he said, uh, uh, again, this is a press release. Millions of little Matt Hancocks doing little flips over the lining of Trump's Doing one lines. of those like heartfelt posts on the account of someone who died, being like, this is his wife, just want to announce that he lost his battle with cancer, yada yada, and then it's just a picture of Matt Hancock running. <laughs> <underneath>. <laughs> no, it's the picture of Matt Hancock like, trying to kick a football weird. <laughs> like, making his old scrunch face. Doing the, like, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> perfect joke for an audio medium. Thank you, Milo. <laughs> Look, I did the, fa- imagine the face that imagine I Imagine the face he did. Alice got to see it. Riley got to see it. Will you get to see yeah. it? You can imagine. And that's all that counts. It. Use your mind's eye. Yeah. Uh, no, so I want to read what actually Matt Hancock uh, wrote on Matt Hancock MP. He said, I like that he announced it on Matt Hancock. I'm like, who's reading this? Uh, breaking. After f- almost five gloriously this app. after almost five gloriously fun years, <laughs> it's time to bid farewell to the iconic and he put that in quotes Matt Hancock app, a platform that has secured multiple it- exclusives, including Matt Hancock's backing of Rishi Sunak for PM. <laughs> wow, what a scoop! It, uh, a genuine question: Is Matt Hancock removing the Matt Hancock app? Purely because it's called Matt Hancock MP, and he's not standing again. Oh, so yeah. He, and he, he doesn't, change and the name he and doesn't the know app. how to change the name. Well, he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't know how. And then it would be like full. If sacrifice. he just had an, an a social media app dedicated to himself without being an MP, that would be much funnier. Yeah, just a I legacy want MP the app. regular yeah. Matt Hancock app, the Matt Hancock After just Dark. vibes yeah. app. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they, it's mm. like you. Oh, they've actually they've let porn. But now he's done an MP. You can post porn on the Matt Hancock MP. Horny app. Matt Hancock yeah. app. <laughs> um, uh, so Matt Hancock grinder. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have to wear a suit and tie in your profile picture. Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. if you want to follow Matt Hancock for your updates, don't worry, he's still on TikTok. And the press release that I saw, because I saw this, I saw this um, press release. Like you can <laughs> remat his tick mats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck! His Matt talks. Um, I love doing. I love Matt talk. That's what he's called this podcast. Welcome to Matt, Matt. talk. I love watching yeah. Matt talk. Yeah, he should yeah. start a podcast That's called Matt talk, which is primarily again, released on TikTok. It's weird to, for it to be about a private citizen. Yeah, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah, but he's yeah. Although he's not just going to be a private citizen, he's going to be pursuing, we presume, other or like you can opportunities. Post any video, in but public it has life. to be of Matt Hancock. Yeah. Um, well, he's he's <laughs> that's the, uh, right. Because uh, the press release, uh, well, the Matt Hancock release, the Matt uh, was rematted to several uh, news outlets. The Matt release, and well, one I've been able to find of it, it looks like he may have misspelled his own TikTok at, but I can't confirm whether that's a transcription error or his error. So do be advised there. Um, but the, before we move on to the startup, the, the thing I find so funny about the Matt Hancock and Matt rise, era. right, is that I just I know like at <laughs> university I uh, know he was this extremely ambitious climber who thought he was the shit, right? He bu- fully believed he was going to be one of these guys who was He's trying total, to get out of easy, right? total master of the universe, right? Mm-hmm. And mm. he was going to do it the same way that like all of these sociopaths climb the same shitty greasy pole from uh, Oxford Union to like the, the Parliament, right? And he did it. And for, and it worked for a little fucking while. 
until and just but just the fact that the fact that he was for so just a short period of time grasped that brass ring of power and then just through sheer incompetence and sh- horniness was reduced to eating camel dicks and making announcements on his own um terrible app <laughs> you can pr- it happened on such a short timeline too like on average matt hancock's time in government uh you know was vaccines fired and then the rest of his life stretches out before him and it's like one long kangaroo <laughs> yeah, penis. Here's a, it's a, I'll do, as, I think that's the right way to look at it, right? Which is, he had everything he wanted, but was just marginally mm. too stupid to keep it. Ozymatius. It's like, a, it's like a sort of Greek moral fable. Two vast you know? of trunkless um, legs of stone, and on the pedestal, these worlds appear. I think if you want to have a caramel waffle, you can have a caramel waffle and, I mean, in you, moderation. You also can't overstate the role. Once again, as usual, like you can't overstate the role of the British press in deciding to play kingmaker here, and, or course. king unmaker in this case. But just, mm-hmm. just that, that, he came, matter. that he came so close to getting everything he wanted to being a respected sort of big beast of the Tory party who might be called in in his over elder years being elder statesman and to make himself into a an F level reality TV laughing stock yet y- it's delicious it really is and, great. E- and every single time he was going to try to get like i don't know like bought or whatever it was like his pub landlord or like someone at the jockey club it was just so yeah, the tiny fucking set of low furniture rent. That he got given uh, yeah uh, well uh, we have this to say about Hancock come on the show <laughs> Yeah, uh, Britnology, right. you're free. Britnology is waiting for you, mm-hmm. Matt. Look, uh, we've gone for uh, all, so long on our little ornamentation and window dressing up front. We got to do the startup, friends. Oh, it's called Feeder. Oh no, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, panning no, shot of the kink dot com armory. Uh, <laughs> um, is it is it a Bluetooth connected bird feeder? No, that's that's sort of like the first three months of the show kind of thing. This is very I much maybe uh, you went retro, you know. It, it it can't be something actually useful. So it's gonna be like because my feeder suggests to me like a news feed, like it's gonna make the the TL from the hell site, Matt Hancock MP, it's gonna make that a you everything, right? You just have, like log in to one browser, scroll through all of your social media. Uh, you got Matt Hancock MP. You got Jeremy Renner. Yeah. No, Alice, um, you're describing the program Matt Suite. Yeah, no, it uh, yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> it downloads all of your mats from MattHancockMP.com, and then it prints them onto donuts, and then it force feeds you them like the donut Homer Simpson machine in in hell. Uh, well, I'm gonna like, you're just so close. You, no, neither of you are close. Neither of you, neither of you are close. You fool. Uh, no, the the tagline: Don't act, react. <laughs> don't Matt remat. Yeah, don't Matt remat. <laughs> um, how it works? Easy, comma deep. How it, well, how it um, works is easy. Uh, the kings dot com armory once again. <laughs> easy and deep. Take don't, it easy, but uh-huh. deep. don't act react. How it works? Easy deep. I think it's pretty self explanatory. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I I've bought one already. <laughs> yeah, so no. Welcome <laughs> to feeder the future of remote facial recognition in marketing. Wait, remote facial recognition? Yeah, yeah, you know how when you look at your phone, your phone has a little camera in it that recognizes your face? Sure, I always don't like that. Uh, well, what this startup said is, what if that camera interpreted okay. your facial expression when you looked at certain ads? Oh, good, oh, we're doing so this it, thing again. It, it, yeah. When I see a bad ad, I just have to make a massive frowny face as a mm. sort of don't show me this again sort of thing. Mm. <laughs> you have to, you have to like, make a really big stick <laughs> face. I, I, kind of, I kind of support this, right, if it leads to the like ability to boo ads in public places or like throw mm. rotten fruit at them or like generally sort of have a bit of street theater about it i support that uh, you this know? man I think, remastered I think we should an be ad, able to, uh, but he wasn't smiling yeah. when he did it oh uh, now alice I, I think we have to be able to like make ad executives feel bad in new ways mm. that's a key priority for me going into 2023 and I think one way to do that is to be able to convey to them through analytics. A bunch of people looked at this and went, you did a bad job and this makes me unhappy. Oh my God. Last night we were at a pub quiz and as this is relevant, I promise. And as part of the pub quiz, they had like, a- what's the future of facial recognition and marketing? You were yeah, like, feeder. It was weird. They had it. It's more on the note of Alice talking about people getting instant feedback. They had a caption competition mm. where it was a picture of Keir Starmer talking to Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. And he's doing like the kind of like 
chop hand gesture. Not the five finger point. As yeah. A, yeah, the Brecon point. Mm. Yeah. And 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 like so we were feeling pretty confident about about this round. And so I wrote, uh, a, a, anyway, I went for a parallel park, which with the rear reversing camera on the Vectra was a, bl- was a breeze. Um, and then the guy was like, well, we've picked a winner. This was by far the best caption. And then what he read out was, I used to be a lefty Lucy, but now I'm a righty tighty. And I've never heard such silence in all my life from like 50 people <laughs> in a pub. <laughs> and then he went, well, it was the best one. And I just went, no, it wasn't. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, so if you ran that pub quiz, uh, you suck, uh, and, and mm-hmm. you should uh, you should consider getting feeder. No, so uh, I want to ask you both: Do you think that this is also an insanely transphobic product? I, uh, I bet it oh, is. Oh, it's got to be. Uh, yeah, of course. Open, uh, Alice. Open your Twitter DMs. Oh God. I mean, first of all, that <laughs> that's a what sentence in this? itself. But... This feels like a tampon advert. 100% female, 97% happy, 97% laughing. You go, girl. <laughs> this is, okay, so what I'm being shown here is, as you say, a, a, a photo of a woman on her phone that is emitting three sort of, like, graph bolts of lightning. Which look a bit like the Satisfyer. <laughs> yeah, it would show you how... Laughing how happy and how female she is, which is, I guess it's nice that they've managed to express it as more of a spectrum of gender that you can be like, you know, I'm 75% female today or something like that, you know, but it, I, 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 hmm. how do you express laughter as a percentage? What? Yeah. What is <laughs> how loud are you? We're back to the Ranger School thing, where it's like one hundred percent exertion is death, right? If you're one hundred percent laughing, you are one of those guys who is like gonna laugh so hard that you have a heart attack. Yeah, you get like right? like the like the Stuttgart medieval laughing plague that killed thousands mm. or whatever. Yeah, it's yes. the funniest joke yeah. of all time. The Monty yeah. Python sketch. Also, yeah, one hundred percent happy. Like, uh, it sort of conjures up images. You're of, Matt Hancock. Like, no, you're well, exactly, you're, no, you're yeah. Buddha. You're, at that point, you, you, you're Buddha. You've experienced a sort of like perfect Dostoevskian sort of like piousness. Um, you, you're just like sort of smiling beneficently up at up at the prison warden. Yeah, I, <laughs> that amazing tweet about the like, no, take yeah, the Dostoevsky yeah. book away from him. He's going to come to a sense <laughs> of like, acceptance mind, yeah. and peace about the cruelties of prison. <laughs> <laughs> and like prisoner smiling beneficently up at the warden. Yeah. Warden, oh fuck. Well, yeah. T- t- what happened was I looked at this ad for a crypto exchange. And now, um, I've achieved enlightenment. Uh, I'm just that happy. It says, it says. Cool. Feeder re- analyzes the instant, instant reactions of your audience while they watch your content. Our facial recognition system tracks users' micro-expressions and measures their reactions to help your understanding of whether you're communicating effectively or not. Before launching your yeah, campaign... I walk past an ad and a big fucking thing that flashes up that says clockability 100%. Great, thank you. <laughs> I will not be purchasing your product. (laughs) (laughs) So, you might want to know how this actually works, right? Uh, Our facial recognition system tracks your audience's micro-expression, delivering emotion-based data in real time, such as what what percentage uh, laughing are they? Yeah, (laughs) well, 100% laughing. Oh, boy. Each one of the micro-expressions your audience makes in front of your content can't be faked and are unconsciously linked to one of the seven basic emotions, fear, anger, joy, sadness, contempt, disgust, and surprise. What ad are you serving that's going to give them like, and of course, homosexual <laughs> urges. <Yeah. laughs> a lot of people reacting to our ad had homosexual urges. Yeah, boy, really. Yeah, just come to the like big klaxon and a loudspeaker. Anytime you walk past it, the text and it just goes homosexual urges. You're just looking at, like a soup advert, and you're like, "What is this, <laughs> is this thing calibrated the guy's wrong?" Or? Loading soup into his mouth in a really seductive way. Oh no, sorry, sorry. We didn't have this hooked up to the sentiment measurer. We had this hooked up to the homosexuality. Exaggerator. <laughs> why, are there, why are there twinks bathing in the soup, no. rubbing their nipples? What's going uh, on? Our, our algorithm translates. Wait, so there's a twink in my soup. <laughs> our algorithm. Uh, Be quiet, sir. For one the backstroke, apparently. <laughs> uh, our algorithm translates each one of the emotions that your audience is feeling. Fear, anger, joy, sadness, dis- contempt, disgust, and surprise. How are contempt and disgust so... Like, how are they? How are two of the <laughs> fundamental emotions, of which there are apparently only seven, and two of them are almost the same? It's based on some research. That's, oh, like, okay. that's like pretty widely accepted. Mm. Uh, we have what used these seven emotions. The research is pretty fucking stupid also, maybe. We have used you know, these know. seven emotions to create 11 qualitative dimensions based on diverse formulas and parameters given by the emotions themselves. 
the 11 qualitative dimensions. So there's seven emotions in 11 dimensions. Right, okay. And nine delights. Mm. Uh, the 11 qualitative dimensions yeah, the are... the 7-Eleven of emotions. Attention. You really do become the Buddha if you're 100% happy on this. This is... Mm. Well, there's attention, validation, engagement, charisma, intensity, inspiration, surprise, rejection, horror... Horror! <laughs> <laughs> the horrifying ads. Great. So, yeah, 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 scariness. Yeah. It's suddenly having like a Conradian moment. Scare and upset. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and I, I, up- do, I truly do love the idea. Again, a, like, a, uh, a, like a cosmic horror ad. Where it's a, yeah, an ad for a crypto exchange that if you look directly at it, you tear out your tongue and go mad. Yeah, you start saying shit like, where we're going, we don't need eyes to see, so on and so forth. Um, the, and so what, what happens, right, is ha- you have to ask, though, how does it turn on your facial recognition camera and start, like, grabbing my facial features to see, you know, how turned on I am by the crypto exchange ad? So there are a couple of ways. They have a web app, so it's like you can send your campaign to your audience to analyze them. You generate a unique link. And then they'll go to a website that's like, we are going to take a picture of your face now, and then you can use it for data, A-B testing. Or mm. you can do it on your own, and then you control <laughs> if you turn it on. Uh, and uh, you can tell them in the privacy policy that everyone reads. Um, fortunately, mm. this is one of those startups that like won a startup contest. So I don't think it's coming to a theater near you anytime soon. But uh, boy, is it a... Um, are we just sort of looking at the proposition of, hey, what if we took that thing, you know, where like if you go into the store in the States and it has the like video screen saying what is or isn't in the um, in the cooler, the cooler screen. And it also takes a picture sure. of you and measures your response to like, you know, the, the diet fresca or whatever that you're looking at the Seeing picture of. the mountain dew has run out and experiencing cosmic horror. Yeah. And yet also, weirdly, 10% <laughs> homosexual urges. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe if I seduce the stocking boy, he'll, he'll get me some Mountain Dew. <laughs> so, right? Because you're just ha- really getting into some strange, like, metrics to track this. As like, oh, you're experiencing, you know, 5% of disquiet yeah. or something. Yeah. It's like... 3% percent on we. Yeah, it appears, <laughs> it appears that looking at our, our, our ad for like a new sports drink has made you quixotic? What? Yeah, suddenly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, this bacon got me acting cantankerous. <laughs> uh, so, but that, it used to have to go into a store to get profiled in that way. Mm. And this company is saying, what mm. if we just extended that with the logic of e-commerce and you could get profiled sort of anywhere in the comfort of your own phone? Um, cool. Yeah. So, hey, fun, cool, uh, but also horror, uh, upset, yeah. scare. Yeah. I'm scared. And I think it's cool I'm that scared. like the, uh, the the ads are now getting much weirder because of you know being increasingly AI generated. So now you really could have an ad that scares you, <laughs> that disquiets you, that gives you ennui or gay thoughts. All right, all right. That's the that's feeder. Uh, a fun little start. One of the best places to find startups for this show is looking at like what wins startup competitions and at like accelerators and stuff because that's where a lot of the mad ideas go. Um, mm. but no, there's look. a pitch that begins. We all go to the supermarket and experience cosmic horror and homosexual <laughs> urges, but no one has yet monetized it. Um, it's time for the Britain portion of the evening. Uh, ah. because alas. Oh, Dessert first, that. was it? Uh, this, well, because yeah. you know how, like, this, how we talked about a savory vape as, and then it came mm. true? Yeah. Uh, or at least yes. by implication. The hummus vape. Yeah. By, and not that came true. That's overstating it. But by, let's say by implication, the market opportunity for it opened up, let's say, in Scotland, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So someone, mm. someone accidentally had the same idea, but seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Well, this is another thing we talked about on the show. This is sort of was The Economist's idea, but it also has sort of come true, which is that days after The Economist uh, praised Rishi Sunak for, you know, couching things like plans to deal with the small boats, uh, which is, you know, one of the most uh, bloody political euphemisms of our time. He's building those but, ships in bottles, well, right? That's what he means. He's uh, about, but saying that this is wonderful because it's couched in a five point plan, which makes us feel nice. Um, Rishi Sunak has now released a five-point plan to fix Britain, which includes dealing with the small boats. I I fucking love, because you've got the picture up here, I love Rishi Sunak's 
graphic design team where like Rishi Sunak has a kind of like he's trying to build the world's most boring cult of personality where because he started it with eat out to help out where it was like have a meal on Rishi and it's like a picture of him like holding a plate of food or whatever like explaining it was yeah and then here Mm. we've got like his five points and it's like him looking business like carrying a folder and then at the bottom it says prime minister Rishi Sunak which whenever I read that I experience a bizarre like out of body feeling where i'm like oh yeah he is the prime minister it feels like a kind of like a supply teacher that the other teacher just hasn't come back and no one's like asked mm. any questions <laughs> like like it's a, it just feels like he's not prime minister but he is <laughs> I'd forgotten about the fact that there was a prime minister entirely. I thought we'd left it vacant. I mean, well, if you you might, yeah. pro- and it, it's strange because the, like the vibe is so much like prime minister nerd is here to give us all extra homework. Yeah, exactly. Which he just did, by the way. He made us like uh, like you have to take maths to like uh, eighteen now. You have to take a maths A level. Oh, uh, so like first thing of the year is more homework. Uh, Rishi children. Sunak, Good. I did maths A level, and I do this for a living. <laughs> Think on it. <laughs> Uh, also, I hate to say it uh, for everyone who has that dream, but uh, it will be true that we will that you will be forced to retake yeah, you actually a have math. To go back yeah. to a level, level to yeah. do a math A level. You're gonna yeah. have to do a math A level, and the dress code is that you're in your bathrobe, putting uh, half the country mm. in a never been kissed style situation where they have to go <laughs> back to high school to compete one class. Compete, complete. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's it's, and that's the thing. I sort mean, sort of a twenty-one Jump Street depends what 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 reference you want to uh, reach for. You could there, do you know? uh, Billy Madison if you want. You could do any kind mm-hmm, of a, a yeah. back to school. You could be a Dangerfield. So all of school all of, of the streets in Liechtenstein have been renamed Twenty One Jump Street for the day after Rishi. <laughs> he's very confusing <laughs> for the postman. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack. I'm on Twenty One Jump Street. <laughs> um, no, so the <laughs> no, there's also just half of them are Twenty Two Jump yeah. Street. Uh, so they also the, care for the film. <laughs> Uh, the um the the actual five point plan he has I mean you might say this is I think goes to why you say it doesn't really feel like he's prime minister partly because I think is he's more powerless than usual like a lot of them are pretty powerless he's more powerless than usual um his here's his plan to fix the country uh, okay. he's gonna have inflation how um by what mechanism uh did maths. This is the thing. We we get enough we get enough like eighteen year olds together, right? And we get them to do math today level. Enough of them will get good grades that we can use them as sort of like human computers, like Dune style, like Mentats. We just network yeah. all of them together. They're gonna find a way to figure out how Who to mutes? pass inflation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to have inflation in your Rishi Sunak, the best thing you could possibly do is get a job on the Moneta- monetary policy committee in like Washington. That's how you're going to reduce. You could be if you could being John Malkovich into Jerome Powell. You could probably fight inflation that way by choosing not to raise rates by cho- by the U.S. not choosing to raise rates because like not only does the British government not really have much direct power over the interest rate, the fucking Bank of England doesn't really have a lot of direct power over inflation. It's mostly the U.S. It's time to sort of take him hostage, diehard style. You know, that's the policy. That's what we're announcing. Seize control of the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, we, 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 we have a military, yeah. don't we? Still? Yeah, yeah. We could, just we, about. We could, like, let's get the guys from SAS Who Dares Wins, or the guys who are doing yeah. the bins in that one town or whatever, the SAS Soap. guys. Yeah. yeah, We've got to make a monetary policy intervention. <laughs> yeah, send the, NH- <laughs> send the S- SAS to go and fix the monetary Fanny policy. Fannie Mae, fucking weird name. Yeah. On your go called <laughs> Fannie Mae once. Uh, economy growing. So again, how are you, how? What are you going to do? What are you going to cut, like... Our oh, line goes up. Not gonna, yeah. not gonna spend anything on anything. Well, so. that's I'm gonna also... roll up my sleeves. I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna bend the line back up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> debt falling again. How? How's that gonna happen? Uh, but we're also while spending less and having the debt fall and also not having inflation, we're also gonna reduce waiting lists. Okay, what he has done, he has presented a series of things that I don't know. I guess would be nice if they happened. I suppose. Uh, and said, this is my plan, is for these four things to happen. And then another thing, which is passing laws to so- stop the small boats. So mostly stuff he doesn't have the power to do, except one thing that he sort of has the power to do, but that it would be bad if he did. And then would probably get overturned by the courts anyway. Maybe. It's, it's fun, Great. isn't it? Yeah, we're going to reduce NHS waiting times. So we're not going to pay the nurses more or employ more of them. Oh, more goodness, of them. No. 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 No, no, no. But what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to email them every morning with a target. 
of how many people they should nurse that day. And then if they don't meet the target, then they'll get another email informing them that they've not met the target. And we're pretty sure that that will resolve the problem. <laughs> Honestly, this country just like it just it makes you feel like you're going insane. Like I read a thread by a guy, like a doctor who'd worked in the NHS for thirty years the other day, just explaining things that I basically already knew about how, like, when you cut the NHS and social care, then what happens is a bunch of old people who could otherwise be at home are in hospital beds. But what I didn't know was that. Uh, something like 33% of all hospital beds have fit for discharge patients in them because there are no social care services in which to discharge them in like the biggest bed crisis the NHS has ever had. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it just like, it makes you want to have a word with Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, and, and so this is what he said, right? He says, I have five promises. Uh, those are the five promises. Um, they're going up against the ten pledges. We'll see how they I'm do. I'm only going to keep one of them. Also, it's not any of the like, good ones. <laughs> he he's described it as a plan. It's not a plan. It's, a, it's not even five different. That's that's five goals, which you haven't said how you're going to do. It's not even goals. It's sort of wishes. It's, it's a five point Santa's <laughs> five list. wishes. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a letter to Santa. Yeah, it is. It's 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 because so many of these just basically depend on what the Fed does. Because I think we've talked about this before, but it's worth it's worth mentioning again. Which is that one of the ways in which the U.S. deals with its inflation is by having the global reserve currency. It just exports it. Um, is what it means is like it's because so many other things are are denominated in U.S. dollars. Uh, other countries just end up buying more U.S. dollars at a t- at times of like at, of price inflation. So the U.S. currency mm-hmm. stays pretty stable and their inflation rate stays pretty low. It's just at the expense of literally everybody else. And so like there is so fucking little we can do. As not the global reserve currency, like it, it cannot be overstated, really. Like there are things we can do, sure, but it's one of these things. We could we can tinker around the edges. We can we can we can do what we do. You know, we can we can make changes for sure. A great thing to but, do would be to bring down the fucking energy prices, because well, that's well, doing maybe. a huge amount of it, and that's the one thing they refuse to do anything about. What is it? Why? It, it, it would be so simple to build green energy, to nationalize any of it, to, to attempt to address the, like, pro- arguably the biggest driver of the cost of living crisis in this country, which kind of is going hand in hand with inflation. Like, you could, you could just do it. It's like being like you're being mauled to death by a bear. And you're like, I wish we could do something about this situation without, of course, addressing the fact that that we're being mauled by a bear. That is the one red line, which I know I'm open to reading a book. I'm open to calling into a drive time radio show. Hell, I'm even open to watching something on Amazon Prime. But the one thing that we will draw the line at is making any attempt to get this bear off of our leg and or balls. We will not do that because it's not right to do so. <laughs> It's important that the bear is on my leg and balls, That's mauling right. them, because, mm-hmm. you know, if it wasn't there, it could be worse. It, it could. could. Be much, it could I could be, be experiencing yeah. horror. I could be experiencing homosexual urges. We could make the problem much worse by removing the bear from our balls and leg. Yeah, uh, legally, there's nothing wrong with experiencing homosexual urges. They're perfectly fine urges. <laughs> That's legally. just the sort of thing that he might think. <laughs> legally. Uh, Morally, we make no comment, but legally... <laughs> So <laughs> legally these days, <laughs> you can't stop them. <laughs> oh boy! So, so he says further: <laughs> no tricks, no ambiguity. We're either delivering this for you or we're not. And I think I know which one of the two of those it's going to be. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's an easy one to call for the bookies. Yeah. As you say, the one thing that can have something of an effect, they won't. Because think of it like. With the U, the U, what the U.S. dollar does is kind of the ocean in which we are sailing, right? Mm. And then what we do with the ship is going to help how we navigate that ocean. They're doing the one thing that will stop us from. They're they're preventing us from doing. To have another metaphor in here, they don't want to steer away from the iceberg, which the ocean is kind of pushing us towards. Yeah, and there's a bear on that oh, iceberg. <laughs> they're eating your balls and leg, <laughs> and the bear is having homosexual urges now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when does he reach Poughkeepsie? Yeah, that's uh, right. So uh, they say we will we will either be delivering these for you or not. 
which is a great political sloganeering, really <laughs> natural. Or, <laughs> or not. Let's find out together, you know? And if not, you can vote us out, which you were going to do anyway. We all remember when Tony Blair said, education, education, or not. <laughs> <laughs> says, or not, if you feel like it, feel free to say no. I miniature it's, American it's, flags for others. <laughs> it's such a like running out the clock thing to do. It's like we know we're gonna lose in 2024. Therefore, this is what we 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 might do it. Maybe if we feel like it, we'll see if we get the time in. Sort of second to last day of term. You know, it's it says we will rebuild trust in politics through action or not. Or not. <laughs> or not. Or not. <laughs> Probably not. It's Let's very see. funny to say or not after the platitudinous one, the one that they can't really say if you've done or not. They're still like, or oh, maybe we won't. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 stay tuned. Maybe, eh? we, yeah. maybe we won't restore trust in politics. We will, maybe it'll just stay this bad forever. We, we, we will conduct ourselves in office with dignity and honor. <laughs> or not. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll have an orgy and sell the pictures to the Daily Mail. I don't know. <laughs> Who can say? Hey, maybe we'll get bored in there and try and do like an asshole measuring contest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll make all the spads suck me off. Who knows? So Can't so- say for sure. It's me, <laughs> Prime Minister James A. Caster. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steer us out of this recession or not. Let me tell you, I'm definitely going to do it unless I don't. James Acaster losing confidence very suddenly. Let's crack on or not. Let's crack on Let's unless crack you don't on, feel baby. like it. <laughs> Let's, Let's crack see on if we want to crack on. Like because ultimately, right, the, the thing that this is basically about is the NHS, which is the thing that everyone who's been like concerned about, for example. We're going to give you a cancer operation or not. Why don't you just turn up and find out on the day? <laughs> Let's crack on or not. So, but the, the the thing that sort of I guess we have been we've been talking about sort of since we've been doing this show, um, the thing that anyone in Britain who's been paying attention for the last again, what do you want to call it, forty, twelve, six, however many years, right, That's has been one. saying is at some point the fact that every single year there is a winter crisis that only seems to get worse indicates that the free at the point of use healthcare system, which everyone seems to fucking love. Um, is going to be uh, no longer functional at all. That thing that we were warning about, mm. that all those people have been warning about, mm. that we've talked about before with like various doctors and other people, has now happened. It's not happening. It's oh, not no. about to happen. It is currently happening and also has happened. Like when 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 we when COVID first um, when first ca- came up, right? We had an episode where we said that what we sort of foresaw is that the way that we are managing, the way that Britain is being managed, the way that, as well, a lot of companies are being managed, in addition, is the idea of someone now just walking off a precipice and not falling because they haven't yet looked down. Well, they looked hmm. down, they, and then all the bombs in their pockets have already exploded, and what's happened is some of the goo is now hitting the floor. Yeah, hey, and you know also the was bear right? is licking up the remains of their dick and balls. <laughs> who was right, Alice? Yeah. <laughs> Liz Truss, because if you recall, one of her tweets, she she forgot to type in a word, and she said, Britain will be ready to hit the ground from day one. And 2023, (laughs) have we not hit the ground day one? (laughs) It's like revving up my motorcycle into a cloud of dust to reveal me lying completely dead on the ground. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that is Britain. And I, 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 it's it's so insanely dispiriting, and particularly the NHS thing. That's just been the like the straw that has like broken the camel's back for me because it's such a like baseline function of a society, right? That w- we agreed this at some point in the twentieth century that if you you know accidentally cut your arm off or whatever trying to open a tin can with a hammer, trying to fight this knife, bear. Yeah, trying to fight a bear. If you did that, you could call someone and they would take you to a hospital, right? And now we've degraded things at long last to the point where finally you can pick up the phone and be like, ah, my arm's off. And they will be like, sorry about that, but no. A recorded message will be like, hello, press one for arms, press two for (laughs) legs. Press three for any other inquiries or billing. The only difference is now it is press one to receive a text message with what to do if your arm has been torn off. 
Oh yeah, that's sort of. And you get a text message saying, D- "Don't do that." <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the the new advice now for for those of you in America. The the developments with the NHS has essentially been that because of like, years, uh, uh, decades, in fact, but you know years more acutely of underfunding because the scars caused by COVID were not fixed, but also because of you know things like PFI. Where I, I read a statistic today, in fact, that for fifty, we have now accumulated again student loan style. 300 billion pounds of interest and servicing charges on 52 billion pounds worth of infrastructure projects. Amazing. Wow. So, and, but uh, more than just that, right? More than just that, um, that, that what has happened is there is just an unwillingness to, uh, to keep the service working. There is an unwillingness to remove the remoras that have attached themselves to it, uh, such as as well the staffing agencies. Right. Oh yeah, of course. You know, there is an unwillingness to do anything about that, uh, and again, this is bipartisan, of course. Uh, unwillingness of course. to do anything about that, which has resulted in uh, headlines uh, in in the in the press, right, saying uh, oh, ex- over five hundred excess deaths now being recorded uh, on on I believe a weekly basis um, because of just the fact that if you call an ambulance and you're having a heart attack, one may get to you in time to pronounce you dead. Which is fantastic. Which is handy because you know if you're dead, you mm-hmm. want people to know. It's a fun <laughs> thing right. to announce. Uh, it's kind of like a gender <laughs> Saves reveal. Saves time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and having the ambulance service sort of uh, post my death on, on on TikTok. It's like I'm like I'm like totally dead, and like one of the uh, one of the ambulance crew is doing like a it's like a default dance over my body. The fantastic. ambulance service remattered my mat talk of me being dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He should have stayed health secretary forever. You know, he might have killed your nan, but we would have got Matt Tock's Matt Tock death announcement. Matt, Matt Hancock like dancing and pointing to some text that's like, "Remember to remat your death mat on Matt Tock." <laughs> and you know, at the same time as again, there is these historic again. And the, when I say historic, it's not. It's the Royal College of Nurses to re, to remind everyone has never gone on strike before ever. They have not done it, and they are doing it out of desperation to protect the service in which they work, to make it keep being a going concern. Well, I heard they're doing it because they've suddenly become greedy. Yeah, For the indeed. first time in their history, they've suddenly been overtaken by a kind of a stroke of avarice. They have suddenly not so, not... become King yeah. Midas himself, lusting. <laughs> um, and not not to become too like re- rejoiniacs about this or anything, mm. but does anyone remember how if you went to hospital back in the day, a solid you know proportion of the staff were from the EU and just living in the what happened to all those guys? Anyway, is this... I assume they stayed, right? Oh yeah, I, I assume we made it very easy for them to stay. Obviously, they threw a parade yeah. in their honor in Liechtenstein. <laughs> yeah, they, they all they, they took all the money they got from stri- from their agency wages and their strike funds, and they've taken over Liechtenstein to celebrate. That's right. They're all they're all living on Twenty One Jump Street yeah. now. So, uh, so it, it, with the, the background of all of this, high right, on the hog on taxpayers' money. <laughs> the background to all of this, uh, again, is a a Labour Party that is confidently promising to do nothing, right? In fact, this yeah. is, I think this is a policy announcement designed... Don't worry, we're not going to do anything. For the last mm-hmm. 12 years, we've seen successive conservative administrations do things. And what has that done? It's made it worse. Which is why my promise to you is to learn from those mistakes by not doing anything at all. <laughs> I will be completely inert. I will be <laughs> encased in a plexiglass chamber... <laughs> 24 hours a day where I will sit perfectly still, not moving even slightly, apart from the absolute minimum amount of motion required to breathe and conduct other necessary bodily functions. I will be as sedated as possible, and I will not speak or interact with anyone other than perhaps blinking if my eyes become too dry. This summer, David Blaine pulls off his most incredible stunt yet. (laughs) David Blaine is his yeah, for years. So um, the the response to this, right, which is a, a very um, a very uh, you might say obvious problem that the that the government is the government solution is uh, just we're going to solve it by wishing, um, and we're going to mm-hmm. well the wizards yeah, coming back. Yeah, well, or we're going to continue. Basically, we're going to continue funding these things, but we're not going to address the fact that most of the funding goes to not the provision of healthcare, but to other things. We're going to increase. We're going to say things like, 
you can always tell if someone's lying to you with a big number because they emphasize how big the number is. And say, we're putting 14 billion pounds into the NHS. It's like, great, cool. Where's it going? Is it enough? Is it enough for, the, for a growth? Is, is, it yeah, is, to is fix that the... a lot by yeah. NHS standards? I don't know. Yeah. Mm. It, it, apparently not, yep. given that I'm still on the phone with the legs department. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and that they've completely closed the bear control department. They don't even have a dick and balls department anymore because everyone's been eaten by that bear. <laughs> so uh, Starmer has now said Labour was is promising to not spend their way out of the mess left by the Tories. Oh my god! Well, that's the only way out of it. That's the way that you get out of the mess that you got into by not spending enough. But what the other? What the you got? It's, it's, it's like it's like ah, 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 I'm I'm having a stroke, which is very bad because the stroke department has been closed. How how the fuck? Do they think that it, it like it, that there's one thing that's like bleeding, like just just crying out, just so obvious, is that all of these problems have been created by either not spending enough or spending money on the wrong things. And how can your response to that possibly be, we will spend less? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Milo, because he actually, <sighs> I, I transcribed uh, what he, ha- he has a five point plan on why we can't do this. Uh, so what what is this what this has devolved into is two strange and off-putting robotic men accusing one yeah, another but it, no strange robotic men both put into place by the press by the way it's it's two roombas like bouncing off of each other angrily no but pointing fingers at one another and accusing each other of empty sloganeering and they're both right yeah it's it's mm-hmm. it's like you won't drink from the puddle because you're gay all over again yeah. that's <laughs> so but you you, you so is is the answer going to be we can't spend our way out of it because we can't afford it, right? Because we don't have enough money. Because if only there was some way, some idea someone had had about the period of the fucking Indus River Valley civilization for how a government might generate money, might obtain some of that money. Maybe, maybe just a thought, it's just an idea, right? Two ideas, right? Number one, you could print some of it. There's inflation, that's a whole other thing. Fine, maybe we don't want to do that. Or, if you look and you see that there are people who are putting fucking climbing walls and swimming pools on their mega yachts in your society, maybe you could ask nicely to take some of their money! You could do that, you could raise taxes on the very rich, even just the very rich, right? Just that, just a crumb of tax. And then you could take that money and you could spend it on making sure that the, you know, the fucking stroke department opens again, because I'm going to need it in a minute. But I... Well, I'll tell you this, is Labour does have a kind of version of that Too plan. Too dumb to figure out a, a policy that was like pioneered by people building houses out of mud bricks like <sighs> so i'm going to tell you exactly so a couple of things doing the medieval podcast and at the end you get hit on the head with the mud brick it's no it's more than that it's like a it's a prehistoric podcast it's like my you know my guys are planting fields of sesame and like emmet barley uh next to you know the fertile uh the, you know the fertile crescent and i'm going man this is fucking great wish i could take some of that barley but i don't want to be rude and i can't spend my way out of this problem meanwhile the sea people was a crest yeah. in the hill but what oh, we're doing is we we could basically just swap everyone's names out with like Asher Banipal or whatever, and we would still have huh. a relevant complaint to make about like you know, temple management in the Neo Assyrian Empire. I will not make any changes to the Code of Hammurabi. I believe it is set in stone, quite literally. <laughs> oh, it's clever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much. But right, this is um, Labour has said two things. Number one, they've said um, uh, but this is how we. This is Starmer. I transcribed this, being asked a question about how he's going to get public services to do more with less. Um, he says, the way I see it is, if a party wins an election and sets out its, pr- its program for change, then it has to answer how the question, the question of how it will be delivered. Oh, fuck me, dude. If a train leaves Cincinnati at 60 miles an hour, d- d- answer a question. For what? Sorry, I just... I don't, ah. think, I don't think you can deliver it all through the state, and I don't think you can deliver it all through the market. But what we put on the table is the partnership model, which is exactly what the governing consensus has been, more or less forever. What we've put on the table is everything that we've ever done before that has led us to the point where in Britain you can no longer be assured that the state will work hard to save you if you have a heart attack. Years and years of unquestioned thing of where, okay, the market can't do everything, therefore 
uh, the state will do the minimum and the market does almost everything. And that's sort of, we've, we've navigated this successfully. That's survived constant challenges only meaningfully from the right. It's only ever been meaningfully challenged by like Thatcher and Liz Truss going, no, the market should do 100% of everything. And the result is, is, is misery. And, and Keir Starmer goes, yeah, yeah, more of that, please, because I'm the sensible continuity candidate. And, uh, it, like, the problem is all of this shit ratchets up to the extent that, like, y- the NHS wasn't that bad. It wasn't anywhere close to this bad 10 years ago, right? Or, and to be honest, sh- like before COVID. No. But, like, people should, by rights, be able to remember that. People who aren't getting hit with a brick after every episode, like me. And yet, for some reason, I, I don't know, maybe the brick's imbued with some sort of magical property, but I remember that, and no one else seems to. And yet, Keir Starmer doesn't even want to go back that far. It's not even back to, like, the NHS of 10 years ago, heaven for fun, 20 years ago. It's... No, it's the NHS of six months before this, when everything was about as bad, but it wasn't under quite enough stress. It's like, we're not going to replace any of these Jenga blocks. We're just going to like sort of rebuild the pile on top of the ones we've pulled out and hope that that's fine again. What he's do his proposal is that again, like eleven hours into the CIA interrogation in like Egypt, Keir Starmer is saying we're going to give the NHS some coffee to wake it up. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. He says, but he says, what we've put on the table for public service delivery is the partnership model, where an agile, active state works in partnership with the private ser- sector to deliver services together. An or, agile state. It's time for Matt Hancock to come back. That's the thing. The parkour but, state. But if, feline. If you state, could yeah. just put this text and then just say David Cameron said it, and you would fucking believe it. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is just what David Cameron said. This is just what every single, like, everyone more or less since Blair has said this. And only just now. Only just now are is are your sort of mainstream um, Guardian journalist people, your Sky News presenters, whatever. Only just now are they starting to sort of to take a step back and say, "Oh my God, austerity was terrible. What did we do to deserve this?" To which I wish to respond to the these various uh, journos and news presenters and stuff to say, "We did nothing to deserve this. What did you do to deserve this?" Yeah, well, the, this is the thing. You look at any of their posts, like any sort of like mainstream journalist or columnist or whatever, who is like, I can't believe things have gotten this bad. And the replies are all full of like uh, left wing Twitter people with Simpsons avatars who, you know, some combination of us are mutuals with, posting screenshots of them saying in 2019 or 2017 or 2015, it is vital that things become this bad. Um, yeah. Either in order to stave off Jeremy Corbyn, or in order to introduce sort of like needed efficiency, or uh, to get Brexit done, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And, so and congratulations, you have the Britain you wanted, which is governed by fifty percent of the rules from the purge. All emergency services suspended. Crime still very much illegal. <laughs> yeah, because you can you can decide your own your own community punishment now. Oh yeah. Uh, so by, it, by the way, by the way, if you want to know what um, another thing they all agree on, right? Because they all agree that what you have to do is just you know um, give this person being mauled by a bear the right motivational speech, and they will become unmauled, right? They also mm-hmm. agree that there's now the the Tories in Labour and the run up to the election. You're going to see this basically for the next twelve months. Is they're all ratcheting up their um, crackdown on antisocial behavior, what they're doing and what they're promising. So because now um, Michael Gove has been announced as the head of the crackdown, working with uh, Suella Braverman and Dominic Robb to, well, I don't know, like, install the mosquito device in every teenager's Karate bedroom. cop, Dominic yeah. Robb. He's going to personally <laughs> grab these teens and show them a, a good hiding. Th- the most antisocial bunch of cunts in the entire nation are gonna, like, we're gonna fucking put the bomb implant from Suicide Squad on every team. Maybe, maybe you know, Gove, Braverman, and uh, Rob will end up, you know, actually really growing to love a youth group of teenagers and end up coming together mm. to save the community center. Maybe that's the sort of thing that will Well, see, this is, this is the thing, right? The, we, I, I mentioned earlier at some volume that there are, you know, two ways for the government to, to raise money, um, which is print more of it or tax it. There is a third one, which is put on a show that raises exactly the right amount Enter required to save the NHS. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so a modest proposal, um, I think that maybe if you want to have any chance of getting an ambulance anywhere or getting a train anywhere 
or r- any kind of public service, really, whatsoever, I g- get dancing. You know, yeah. it, it's time to make it happen. Keep you know, start building dancing. sets. Um, yeah, and I'm, a one, and a two, and a- so I'm very intrigued by the concept of if we suspend all the emergency services. I w- we've talked about the NHS triage phone, t- like automated phone system. I want to hear the police automated triage phone system. Like press one for gentlemen, press two for ladies, <laughs> press three for altercations, press four for a fracas, <laughs> press five for penalty charge notices. <laughs> <laughs> and you basically get this. I mean, you try getting a crime reference number now. This is what you get. Yeah. So press six for uh, nothing to worry about, sir. Just questioning the, some people suspected of being involved with narcotics. The uh, the the thing for the thing to always remember is mostly mostly what they do is their job is to make it a is to be a part of the system for claiming on your insurance if you get robbed that makes it illegal to lie to your insurance company. Yeah. If you're calling in mm-hmm. reference to a thumbs in Stebvast, go- Stebvast, <laughs> Stebvast, <laughs> Stebvast. Yeah, my favorite yeah. scene in Master and Commander was when the guys got Stebvast, Stebvast tattooed on his knuckle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, please press six. Uh, so, all, all this, finally, right? What is Labor's sort of big NHS saving plan? Oh, I bet it's great. This How is, many points has it got? Uh, only one point. They're gonna. Ooh. They are actually wow. going to do a kind of parody version of what Alice said, which is how you just fund a public service to deliver a public good, which is they are going to abolish non-DOM tax status, which again is a good thing to do. Good, it's a very good it's, start. It's a good, surprising. It's a good thing to do. Oh, they're going to rebadge it mostly, but they're going to raise yeah. some money by changing. Been rebadged, you fool. You're going to spend. <laughs> I'm not gonna, driving in me Metro. Try it. I'll just speak over you. They're going to rebadge it from a non-DOM status to switch status. Yeah, but. Yeah. Essentially, become right. a Kia Picanto. But th- this is this is one of these things. Much like the top rate of tax, which like doesn't actually bring in bring in a lot of money. It's sort of sim- it's more sort of symbolic. Um, mm. But it's it's one of these things that does allow some people to grow fantastically rich, right? They're going to abolish this one thing, and then they're going to use that to fund like some thousands more training spots for doctors and nurses. Oh, cool. D- okay. Uh, that's not good. Are they going to raise the wage? No. No, no, not at all. Are they going to uh, also they gonna train it... more doctors who will all then move to Australia immediately? Yeah. Are, they, are we going to are we going to chain are we going to look at the fact that um, you know staffing agencies will charge what like sometimes up to three times as much as the wage for directly employing a doctor or nurse? No, we will not do that. Uh, are we going to be looking at the fact that under some PFI contracts, if you want to change a light bulb in a hospital, you have to call Capita, ask them nicely, and bribe seven guys? No, we're not going to do that either. Uh, are we going the Soviet Union, but shit and expensive? It's it's incredible. <laughs> are we going to um, additionally, you know, or even this? Are we going to, you know, realize that a lot of the salary burden in the NHS doesn't go to the healthcare provider? It goes to the healthcare exaggerator, to the healthcare mm-hmm. measurer, to the person who's looking at the doctors and trying to like make them more efficient or whatever. We can address that. And like crucially, no. crucially, this is something that like whenever uh, funding of the NHS comes up is always talked about in terms of like waste and bureaucracy and big government. But as as you see most clearly in America with the whole insurance complex, this is purely capitalist waste. It is purely waste imposed by the market. Mm. It's a market bureaucracy. The government has very little need for it, very little to do with it in either case. And yet every time it gets wheeled out as, you know, NHS bureaucrats. Mm. And it's like, no, why do you think it needs all those bureaucrats? Because you made the NHS have 50 different in partnership with, uh, with, you know, fucking Capita or Carillion or, you know, just like, or companies that are just names that exist to, you know, like skim off the top of changing the fucking light bulbs. Or, right, not just that, but, um, that you've also you've also said, okay, look, we're not going to run these. We're going to have them at arm's length, which means that they yep. have to get their funding by running like businesses. Which all of a sudden means that the practice of healthcare, which and I is tell it, you what, yeah. people getting cancer is a fucking terrible business. Mm. Like, okay, they keep doing it, but it's it's not a very like financially rewarding proposition if you want to treat them for it. it. It's almost as if that's a fucking terrible idea for a business. And- Listen, it's Maybe a fucking it great some business kind of a- if you make wigs. So no one can say <laughs> if it's good or not. So uh, in fact, what the what the case is, right, is that, uh, and not just that you're managing your partnership with Capita, but also you're in competition. You have to make sure that you're the the choice for patients, so that you can then meet all of your ratings requirements, so that we can enable people to quote unquote choose where they go get their like arm reattached, 
right? All of these ideas are are things that are completely unassailable, and that I hasten to re- to add. All of the people currently loudly bemoaning the situation we are in. Uh, I, I, looking at you, Satham Sangera. Um, all of oh, those my people, personal enemy, Satham Sangera. All of yeah. the, all of these people, right? They've just now noticed, and they're never going to actually notice because it was convenient for them then, and it's embarrassing for them now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keir Starmer's say- in the pocket of the powerful wig lobby. <laughs> That's right. Dave's wig shop are paying off Keir Starmer. <laughs> it's just like it's such it's such a fucking like libertarian mind screw. The, the idea that like yeah, there's a there's a rational consumer out there, right, in all of us, and the rational consumer is the guy who has his arm sewn back on the wrong way because he got a deal on it. Yeah, yeah. He he went down to like you know Dave Courtney's In and Out Hospital. Where got uh, backwards elbow. He he went down to. I'll have a look. Yeah, down in Plumstead. <laughs> I'm I'm not an orthopedic surgeon, but I'll take a look. I want to look. We we I like to. Everyone knows. You all know. The listeners know. Nate, the editor, uh, knows. He'll be editing. Hi, Nate. Uh, he knows. Um, he knows that I like to keep these things in an hour. But after after that, I just wanted to. It's been a very he- it's a heated. It's been a heated hour, and I think we need to like cool it back down a bit. A little bit hot. I want to cool us off by reading uh, a little piece in the Telegraph. The chill out room by Celia Walden. Yeah, we're all gonna have some orange slices and water, and just like take a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this it's is sports day. Just, I, I think like <laughs> everyone, everyone in the British commentariat, or at least a bunch of them, must have just like had a really intense New Year's because some strange columns have been afoot. If you were to measure my reaction, if you were to measure my reaction, I would be uh, cosmic horror. Um, huh. This is by Celia Walden. <laughs> I'm I'm like disconcerted, twenty five percent. I'm a hundred percent laughing, actually. Yeah, <laughs> kind of desi- desire for orange slices, seventeen percent, and growing. Yeah. So uh, this is in the Telegraph uh, by Celia Walden. Of course, Gen Z won't make New Year's resolutions. It would involve actually committing to something. I mean, Whoa. no, it doesn't. Here, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's why everyone stays at the gym. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th- uh, welcome to January, the world's most annoying month if you go to the gym all the time. Oh, it is <laughs> really a, a, les- a lesson from the generation so ruthlessly committed to austerity and bigotry that it's not only is it lying on the floor unable to call an ambulance, but unable to call any of their relatives because they were transphobic to them. So here's the how this article opens, which I remind you says, um, of co- which of course... Uh, of course, Gen Z won't make New Year's resolutions. Use the word resolutions. The first line. You can't say resolutions anymore. <laughs> These yeah, days, the, the Matrix of copyrighted it. Woke culture. You can't, you can't even say, it. say you're going to go to the gym and then not. Uh, when people half you my can't age, resolve to do anything anymore. It says, when people <laughs> half my age tell me I can't say things, I always ask why. And I keep asking why until what little logic there is dries up and they're reduced. So I am arrested for incitement to racial or religious hatred. I- this is this is like what a three year old does is just keep asking yeah. why over and over again until yeah. someone devolves into madness. So last week, however, this tactic failed. Unfazed by my whys, so basically, uh, unfazed by me being incredibly annoying and intrusive. Um, the twenty year old daughter of a friend explained how big goals, clean slates, and reset buttons. Don't just put us under unnecessary pressure, but also imperil our mental health. Um, and again, this just to me, this just there is just this scene. Oh, it's alien versus predator here, isn't it? I can tell I'd find both <laughs> these people annoying. But even then, even then, right? It is just this scene of one person who again thinks, I think, not unreasonably, that putting yourself under quite a bit of pressure to perform some arbitrary task by a deadline, if you could just make yourself life life a little nicer by not doing that, trying to explain that to a fucking telegraph columnist at mm. a Christmas event where alcohol is probably being served. Trying to explain anything to a telegraph columnist, to be honest with you, like the fact that the earth revolves around the sun, um, you know, gravity, any of that stuff I think would be quite trying. Mm. So uh, Celia Walden uh, is aghast to find out that what young people are doing now is rather than trying to beat themselves up into doing something by an arbitrary deadline, are just setting New Year's intentions which of course has angered her at a New column Year's vibes at a yeah. column level. It's also it's one of those things, isn't it, where like one gets column level anger, and like one like one guy has said this, and she's like, ah, everyone under twenty is doing this now. I hate to see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Says, of course, far better to intend to do something. What with it not being so much of a low expectation word as a no expectation word. 
<laughs> Cursory like, Google. Like famously, like mimetically, no one kept their New Year's resolutions. Like it, uh, this is like part of the deal. And surely, y- 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 like the position she's staking out here, as best I can tell, is when I was a girl in World War Two, which happened in the seventies. Um, we didn't have any heating, and we also just decided to do things like kill Hitler, and we did them. Yeah. Um, we drank beer from a paint tin, and yeah. we ate potatoes out of the bath for some reason. Yeah. And it didn't do us any harm. And when all. we said we were going to do stuff, we did it. And that's where the story tradition of the New Year's resolution was invented. And now yeah. you dishonor my generation's sacrifices. At the Battle of the mm. Somme, which happened in the mid eighties, and That's right. uh, by simply intending to do things instead of just going out and doing them. Yeah. By the way, I've been going to the gym every day since January first, nineteen seventy six. Yeah. 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 Listen, I'm, I'm huge. I'm the most yoked at my Telegraph yeah. columnist, <laughs> but also very old. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look, listen. Intending is bullshit. Anyone can intend to do anything, right? Celia Walden intended to write an intelligent newspaper column. Yeah. No, I'm joking. She didn't. <laughs> so a cursory, just kidding. Just kidding. Guys. A cursory Google informs me that a New Year's intention is less me- measurable in terms of success or failure, which is convenient. I don't know. I guess it is because New Year's resolutions fail all the time. Yeah. Because you can't fail to intend to do something. That's that's sort of implied by the concept. Yes, it says um, uh, we like small. Actually, it's, fuck. It's, it's, Wait, it's, no. Excuse you me. know, you know who's doing this. You know who is a woke, uh, under twenty social liberal who's replaced New Year's resolutions mm-hmm. with New Year's intentions is Rishi fucking Sunak. We're we're gonna restore trust in politics, or maybe not. That's a New <laughs> Year's not. intention. We've Rishi come full Sunak circle. is focusing on his mental health yes. in 2023, and we have no choice but to stand. That's right. We are going we to stand. we are going to sit down really hard, and we're going to imagine all. To, we're going to do the secret to lower inflation. Yes, we're going to put. We, we oh, have I told to, you. I figured it out. I figured it out. We're going to put on an incredible um, like dance as all of Britain, and we're going to perform it for for Jerome Powell, and he's going to be so moved by the dance, Danny Boyle's going to direct. It's going to be the Olympics opening ceremony 2012, round two. Jerome Powell, please lower the rate by 50 basis points. But they're going to release a bear into the stadium. <laughs> oh, no. Perfect. Um, it says, re- resolve is such a scary word to these people. A dirty word, really, which is ar- as archaic as its meaning. Did people really once vow to do something and then using only grit, determination, <laughs> sweat, and blood? Making a sacred blood vow to go to the gym more often. <laughs> Upon this, I vowed uh, to remain <laughs> faithful to your father. Do you think I did that? Um, <laughs> this is all, yeah, that, well, that was, that was what the, the oath of the Horatii was about, was uh, three men swearing to go to the gym to defend Rome from it's the like, Etruscans. Lord, That's I right. will build a church in this grove of trees if I go to the gym more often. Like, yeah. what kind of vow are we talking about? If here? you do not see me completely naked and oiled up on the palaestra tomorrow, throwing my discus, you may come to my house and beat me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my solemn vow. Do people really once vow to do something and then using only grit, determination, sweat, and blood actually do it? I don't know, Telegraph columnist, have you ever used grit, determination, sweat, and blood to do fucking anything? The, well, the answer of course is no, they most didn't. Have you ever heard anyone discuss New Year's resolutions before? People say them and then go like, oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but, they but, do them for like a week or ish. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, I've witnessed it in my lifetime. The history books are full of those people. Well, like who? I don't know, Winston Churchill probably? M- Metaxas? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Mithridates? Yeah. yeah. Mithridates <laughs> vowed that he was going to become immune to poison. <laughs> and you know what? He did. This is the kind of grit and determination, actually, that the Zoomers, the woke yeah. need to learn about. About a man who, even though it wasn't pleasant and it wasn't fun, took mm-hmm. a little bit of poison every day because he knew that if he did, he would become stronger. <laughs> and you won't even come with me to the Toby Carvery. So <laughs> think on your sin. Just you wait. 2023 is going to be the year of, scare quotes, intentional living. It'll be the vacuous buzzword in every limp underachiever's lips. To which, again, you are a telegraph columnist accusing others of being limp underachievers. Mm. Um, who just, you were just, whose whole thing is complaining all the time. Because why bother with big goals when you can sit around celebrating life's little wins? 
Yeah, why try to make yourself a little bit happier when you could just make yourself miserable and drink beer out of a big can that used to have lead paint in it, like we did? Mm. I, I was curious, by the way, if um, if this journalist had experienced, you know, grist or whatever, and a uh, uh, very short Wikipedia page, which informs me that uh, she is Piers Morgan's wife. Uh, I take it all back. This woman has yeah, gotten this through has more with written more term, yeah. than anyth yeah. an anything we could possibly imagine. That is right. And to be fair, the lead in the paint tin does actually make you feel better. Yeah. Uh, so, think. Nate, please delete this entire segment yeah, uh, yeah. because we're now wrong. Uh, she's mm. she's yeah. she, she's definitely right. No one has known pain and suffering. <laughs> That's right. Imagine making a solemn vow to spend the rest of your life. Oh, yeah, with Piers she, Morgan. she is allowed to talk to me about like difficult vows after having after having mm. seen that one out. I think. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Look, it's an hour and twenty three. This is unprecedentedly long. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I think a slightly longer yeah. record suits us sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's nice to do every once in a while as a as a little it's treat. The classic configuration. Absolutely. Yeah. And we are going to see you all on the wait a second bonus episode uh, coming out later this week. We've got some yeah, really good guests lined up on Monday, so mm. we'll see which one we yeah, put we, out as the bonus. We've got the bear that's eaten everyone's dick and balls mm -hmm. as one of the guests. So yeah, yeah. Really, a lot of good Hollywood stories on that bear. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Surprisingly down to earth and very <laughs> funny. Uh, and so don't forget, uh, there is a, a Patreon, by the way, that that bonus episode mm, will come out on. It's $5 bonus. a month. You can find it on Patreon. You can. They're also, uh, due to the implosion of Matt Hancock MP, we have decided to do more stuff on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. That's right. Yeah, you can follow us on uh, Instagram and TikTok. I think the handles are Trash Future Pod on everything. I, I, who, it's, you, you, you can, can find You can. It. Just you can put, find just put... Uh, take your little hands and just type <laughs> yeah. trash it mash with your greasy snack laden hands trash future <laughs> into to take your hands out of the trough <laughs> that's not how you use the trough and type, <laughs> you take your little trotters and, and, and type the word trash future <laughs> into your tiktok or your instagram app yeah, or YouTube, if you put so down fine. the fork and knife you're using to yeah. eat from the trough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pause the Andrew Tate video that you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> Unless Watch it's the one Matt that talks. we want, in which case, keep watching it and send it to us. That's yeah. right. Um, oh, also, uh, I'm I'm on a UK tour soon. There are dates on my website. I'm going to many cities, including Brighton, Bristol, Manchester, uh, Maidenhead. Weirdly, others. <laughs> there are others. There are dozens of us. Um, and uh, Brighton is particularly soon. It's on the 25th of January. So if you're feeling like that. If you're in Brighton and yeah. you feel like seeing oh. something good. If you're in Brighton. Um, head over to mylowebers.co.uk slash live dash show. Lovely. And you can get tickets for that. And then also, I'm trying. I made a New Year's resolution this year, which is to oh. say the name of the theme song. Uh, it's, Jin's, mm. it's by Ginseng. It's called Here We Go. You can get it on Spotify. That's right. Uh, is there anything else to... Any other table talk? Anything else to manage? I don't I think so. so. No. All right. See you in a few days. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.